Hey, you. Yeah, you. Come here. Hey, I got all the different kinds of needles right here. Any kind you should need. Have you tried them all yet? Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll give you your first one for free. Come on. You know you want to. Oh, see? Now that wasn't so bad, was it? And you take that home and you try it. And when you like it, you come on back here for some more. I'll be right here waiting. <coughs> Got a boogie. See ya. Hi, I'm Terry Sancha, head moose at Purple Moose Designs. And all kidding aside, I do want to be your needle dealer, but in a good way. Maybe not in a dark alley, but I do want to be your needle dealer. So I sell Schmetz needles. And when I vend at quilt shows or I do speaking engagements at guilds, people ask me about needles all the time. And many of you have lots of questions. But there are a couple of questions that come up quite often. So I thought we'd have a little short video today to answer those questions. So here we go. So the first question is, what kind of machine needle should I be using? Now, here's a big needle. No matter what manufacturer or brand of needles that you use, they all have the same basic anatomy. And as far as quilters go, there's three areas that we need to pay attention to. And that is the groove that's along the back of your needle, the eye of the needle, and the tip or the point. There's many other anatomical parts, but those are the three that you need to be concerned with. So all the different kinds of needles that there are have different aspects of those anatomical parts that make them perform a specific task very well. So for instance, the embroidery needle. You want to use that when you do embroidery. When you do machine embroidery, your, speed, your um, sewing machine goes at a much faster speed than when you're doing regular sewing. So the needle is designed to be able to handle that higher speed and give you good results for your machine embroidery. We also have quilting needles. Those you want to do when you're quilting. The quilting needles have a more rounded tip it's not quite so pointy so that when you have multiple layers of fabric and batting as it's poking through it doesn't poke the batting out through the fabric so it gives you a better result when you're doing um, quilting and then we have microtex or sharp needles and these have a much pointier point and that's really good when you're doing piecing especially when you if you use batiks because they have a higher thread count and with that point to your point, it's able to pierce the fabric easier and give you better results. And then we have top stitch needles. And top stitch needles are good for when you want to do top stitching. <laughs> they have a longer groove on the back and they have a bigger eye, which helps it to accommodate um, fancier or decorative threads with ease. And then we have universal needles. Now, I know a lot of people use universals for all their different tasks because they're less expensive. But if you want to use the right tool for the right job, then you want to use the right tool. So you should be using all different kinds of needles where all these other kinds of needles are made to do a specific task very well. Universal needles are made to do all of those tasks just okay. So if you think about it, you really want to use all the different kinds of needles depending on what you're sewing. So I hope that helps you figure out what kind of needle you need to use. The next question we're going to cover is what size needles should I be using? Now all these different kinds of needles that we just talked about, they come in all different kinds of sizes. So I thought of an analogy that might help you figure out how to pick a good size needle. Say for instance, I have this piece of wood and I want to put this screw into this piece of wood. Now it would be best if I drilled a pilot hole first. Now if I drill that pilot hole too small, I might get the screw in there, but it's going to put a lot of stress on the screw and the wood. That's not good. 
Now, if I drill the pilot hole too big, then the screw is just going to slop around in there and it's not going to do its job correctly. So I need to find the drill bit that has the right size, that will make the right size hole for this screw to put it into this wood. So the screw is your thread. The drill bit is the needle on your machine. You want to match the size of needle to the size of thread that you're using. Now it would be super easy and make my job a whole lot easier if I could just tell you if you're using this size thread then this is the size needle that you want to use. But there are other factors involved too like what kind of sewing you're doing whether it's garment sewing, quilting, piecing, uh, working what kind of fabric fabric that you're working with. Is it upholstery, silk, cottons, um, or do you have batting in there too? You know, there's all kinds of other variables. But basically, if the hole is too small for the thread, then you're going to get puckering in your seams and you won't, your seams won't lie flat. If the hole is too big, then the thread's just going to slop around in there and it's not going to come out good. So, you want to have the right size hole for the size thread that you're using. So if you do get some puckering, then maybe try moving your needle size up a size or two and see if that helps. If you got some really loose, wonky seams, then maybe bring your needle size down just a little bit and maybe that'll give you some better results. So that's it for size. So hopefully I've convinced you that you need to use some different kinds of needles when for the different kinds of sewing that you do. So once you start doing that, then you have all these needles. What do you do with them? Well, they do make these pads. This is called my pad and it's a soft foamy pad and it comes pre-printed with all the different types of needles and the different sizes. So all you do is when you've used your needle for a little bit, but it's not done yet, you still have some life left in it. You just poke it into the section that it belongs in. And it comes with this flower head pin to denote which one is in the machine. Because Lord knows when you have these little needles, you can't see the size that's on there. So this will help you figure out and remember which size and kind is in the machine. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but I am a Yankee, so I had to come up with the frugal Yankee way of storing your needles. And this is just a regular old tomato pincushion. We've all seen these for a hundred years. So it comes with all these different sections on it. So all you do is use like a Sharpie or um, a Pigma pen and write on the top the different kinds of needles that you use on a regular basis. And then down the side, you just make some little sections for the different sizes and you just poke your needle into wherever it belongs in between uses. And same thing, have a decorative or flower head pin in one spot to denote whichever needle is in the machine. And of course, if you're using all these needles, you're going to have uh, to have a way to get rid of them. So my favorite method is the prescription bottle method. Take any old prescription bottle. My favorites are the ones from the vets because they come in cool colors. And you just drill a hole in the top and you want it just a little bit bigger than the needle. And then when you're done, when a needle gets broken or bent or it's no longer in good use, you just drop it right into the hole. And there you go. When it gets full, just toss the whole thing in the trash. If you have some bent pins or whatever, you can just open it up and drop those inside. And if you have the child safety caps, make sure you have a child in the house to help you open it. So that's it. Hopefully we've answered a few questions about needles for you. I do have a guild presentation entitled Needles 101 and we go into a little bit more in-depth information but in a very fun and informative fashion. So contact your guild programs person and I'll come talk to you and tell you all I know about needles. See ya. So you came back. You need some more needles? Great. Well, I bet you're gonna need some places to keep them now, aren't ya? Again? Jeez.